I always wanted to work with kids, even when I was a kid myself. She was driven by this inner feeling and I, I couldn't change her. That's how she was. I just never could understand as a young child why rich people just didn't give some of their money away to the poor people. And then there would be more of a balance in the world. I got married when I was very young and um, had, I guess, what you'd call a prenuptial, that we would adopt kids even if we had kids of our own. Vietnam was um, in the news, it was very real. And when there's war, there's always suffering, and when there's suffering, it's usually the children and the women. She knew there were children in need, and it struck some sort of chord in her heart. And she left, she left kids behind, and she went. I was afraid that she'd be in danger, and I felt her children were here, and she was there. I guess I didn't really realize that how my kids felt about it as much. Well, you guys are not starving to death. You guys are okay, you're healthy, you have a home, you have a roof over your head, and, and these children don't. I couldn't not go. Not once I knew what was happening there. She managed to get a house from the government which she turned into an orphanage. Immediately, mothers were bringing children to them who they couldn't feed and who were sick, and other children were being delivered whose parents were dead, and it was full in no time at all. And a few years later, when Vietnam fell, there were children still being brought in, and they were trying to get them out as quickly as possible. Saigon was in chaos. Viet Cong were advancing on the capital. It was obviously all going to end, and it was going to end in tears. The United States sent a plane to pick them up. They sent a cargo plane. And it's about 12 stories high. It's just ma mammoth. And it brings in tanks and trucks and things like that. It was a cargo plane. Children are not cargo. They'd be going on the plane because I know that we were supposed to be on that plane. Babies from Cambodia that were going to Canada were, were supposed to be on that plane. I was to have been on that plane with the 65 kids I took out of Cambodia, but uh, the Canadian Chargé d'Affaires at the Canadian Embassy said, Naomi, if you wait one more day, I can get a flight in from Hong Kong to pick you up. That meant that seats would be freed up and there were so many kids that they needed to get out. They'd be even going on plane because they're supposed to be here for a reason. This plane came in, it was loaded up with children. The kids were tied in with, with cargo belts over them and they were lying on the floor. As soon as it took off from the Saigon air airport, it, I guess something happened and the plane went up uh, to 20,000 feet and the door blew open. The tail end of the plane was cut by the door. The plane crashed in a rice paddy, bounced over the Saigon River and came to a final rest. A hundred and some children in escorts were killed, and Naomi was the one that could identify the kids and had to do that. And something you just you just can't really believe is happening. You can't believe that all these people who are doing nothing but good, and all these children who never had a chance to even begin their lives, are dead. I was very angry after the crash. I was very angry at God or whoever because these children were dead. It wasn't fair. I was hor horribly depressed. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't function and I didn't know if I could ever work with kids again. And I think that she has been changed by it and that was maybe what drove her forwards to do everything else that she's done to help save other sick and dying children all over the world. Guatemala was another country with a terrible conflict underway, with many children suffering. 
she just can't sit back and see these things happen, injustices, people dying, children starving to death. It's just beyond her comprehension. Suddenly, the whole family was off to Guatemala. And we were all moving down, all 12 of us. What a, what a gutsy move. Uh, now as an adult and as a parent, what a gutsy move. I had a home for malnourished children and uh, abandoned children in Guatemala. Your heart breaks for the kids, you know. You, they didn't ask to be born. They're on this earth. They don't even know why they're here. Seeing children die from things that we could help, that I knew in the United States or Canada, if they were in a hospital, if they were here, we could help them. With a friend from Seattle, she started healing the children, which involved raising money to bring these children to the West, to hospitals where they could get treatment. And we take kids that have very serious medical problems, but they are correctable. And we try to find them the medical care that they need. Her reward is the end result. You know, I think that'll be what she's remembered for. I think I became aware of Naomi very young as well, because that was, she was part of the story of where we came from. And so it was always this, this woman named Naomi Bronstein who went to Cambodia and she, you know, rescued you guys and brought you to an orphanage and then brought you to Canada. 25 years later, Naomi formed a, a reunion of all these children. The reunion was the first time that I actually met her. Um, and it was just overwhelmingly emotional. I mean, you're, you're face to face with this woman who saved your life. These absolutely beautiful, usually 25-year-old kids came. And of course, they were young, young adults. And, and the last time I'd seen them, they were several months old and in awful condition. If anyone could have said to me that I would be watching these kids laughing and healthy and adults sitting around, you know, I, I just could never have believed it. So they were, they were the miracles. And all of those children have doubts about what would have happened to them if it hadn't been for Naomi. Many of them are actually called Naomi. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. And. Uh, that's a pretty big thing in somebody's life. I know that Naomi was recently in Guatemala and that she, in the course of her work there, came across these conjoined twins and that she then undertook to find a place where they could receive surgery and be separated safely. And our hope for them, of course, is to be separated and to be as normal as they are right this moment. However, most of our services um, are by donations of service. Uh, for example, hospitals and doctors donate their services. Airline employees donate their services. And everything is possible, right? And that was the, the spirit that Naomi and Chris and both of them and everybody has, which is everything is possible. No? If you dream it, then let's do it. And I believe that to this day, 78,000 children have been saved through healing the children, which is pretty incredible to think of it. It's amazing, actually. I think that Naomi will probably tell her last breath, be a driven woman in this kind of work. And I cannot think of a better person for the world to support because she knows how to do that. It's just something that I feel inside. That's something that I, I feel that I have to do and something I wish more people would do because it isn't really difficult to help other people, to help kids.